Hey everyone, um, today we're talking about patterns of microevolution. So you guys should already know, what does the word microevolution mean? Don't worry about writing this down, don't write this down, okay? Um, patterns of microevolution, what is microevolution? Remember, we said micro means small, like macro means big. So macroevolution is evolution on a big scale, so at the species level. Microevolution is on a small scale, it's at the gene level. So let's just recap really quickly what we've learned um, previously about all of this, okay? All right, so what have we talked about before? We talked about a population. A population is a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area, okay? So for example, is um, a group of wolves and a group of coyotes together, is that a population? No, it is not a population. Why is it not a population? Because they have to be all the same species, okay? Now, this doesn't mean that all the same species just have to live in one area without any other species. That's not the case. It just means when we talk about a population, we're only talking about one species. So like a whole group of fish, that would be a species, okay? They all have to be the same kind of fish, all right? We talked about microevolution, how genes change over time, all right? We talked about the bell curve, how many genes or traits follow this bell curve where we have a lot of people or traits in the middle with average forms, all right? And very few out on the extreme ends, okay? We talked about the gene pool, all of the genes in a population. Now this is imaginary, it's not a pool you can go swimming in, but if we were to take all the genes in a population and put them together, that would be their gene pool. We talked about allele frequency, how we can figure out the number of, or how common a certain allele is, so how common capital A is, or how common lowercase a is in a population. And phenotype, so how common is a physical characteristic in the population, because phenotype is a physical characteristic. So how common are tan mice? How common are black mice? So today, here's what I need you to write for your title. Patterns of microevolution. What does this mean? We're gonna be talking about how microevolution happens. How do we get those allele frequencies changing? All right, you guys calculated allele frequencies. Well, how do they change? We're gonna talk about that, okay? And again, don't write all this stuff. We're gonna go through these one by one, okay? All right, so the first way we can get allele frequencies changing is through natural selection, okay? So what I want you to write in your notebook is, number one, natural selection. We're not going to write a definition for this. Why? Because we just spent a whole unit on it, all right? Natural selection is the idea that those organisms best adapted to their environment survive and reproduce, okay? So in this case, how is this showing microevolution? Well, let me explain. Over here in this picture, all right, in the beginning, we have four black mice and we have four white mice, okay? Four of each. Those are phenotypes. Those are physical appearances, right? Now, at the end, let's look at how many we have, okay? So over here, we have 50% of each, right? Four out of eight and four out of eight. Over here, we have one white mouse, okay? So one white and four black. So our allele frequencies changed, or I should say our phenotype because we're looking at color, right? So our frequencies change because we have different numbers of colors in the population at the beginning than we do at the end. So again, microevolution, it doesn't mean the genes are mutating necessarily. It just means that in a population, a certain gene might become more or less common, okay? And because we know that color comes from a gene, we can also expect that those gene frequencies are changing just like the phenotype frequencies, okay? All right, so number two, gene flow, okay? If something is flowing, it is moving. So gene flow is when genes move, okay? The movement of alleles or genes into or out of a population, all right? So immigration and emigration, they're very similar words. One just means going into a country, one means leaving a country, 
Either way, people are going in and out of countries, okay? That's typically what we use it um, in today's language, okay? But when we talk about immigration and populations, we just mean they're moving from one group to another, all right? Animals do that. You guys kind of do this, all right? Sometimes maybe you'll, later on in your life, you'll get a job in another state, so you'll move, and there will be people there, a new population of people, okay? So the example I have here, if you want to write down this example, you can. It's up to you. So we have a brown beetle population here. Well, let's pretend that this brown beetle hitches a ride. Um, I don't know what he's going to hitch a ride on. Let's say somebody's uh, suitcase, okay? So he climbs into somebody's suitcase, and he goes on his airplane with the person. The person doesn't know he's there. And he ends up, let's say he was from Florida, ends up in Michigan, okay? Again, I don't think a beetle is going to survive in a suitcase, but if he did, he ended up in Michigan, all right? And he's joining this little beetle population there. So this is an example of gene flow. Why? Because this guy is bringing brown beetle genes into the population of green beetles, okay? So we have our genes changing, all right? This population used to be just green genes or green alleles. But now they're going to have a brown allele. Our gene pool, our total amount of genes, is changing. Okay? So that's gene flow. Movement of an individual from one population to another. All right. Next up, we have the founder effect. If somebody founds something or establishes something, they make it, right? It's brand new. Like the founder of... North Carolina was the person who discovered it and decided to call it North Carolina, right? Or the founder of a deserted island. It's like the first person there. So the founder effect is when a small population leaves and makes a brand new population in a new place. I'll give you a second to write that down. Feel free to pause the video if you guys need more time. So in this case, we have an island over here with beetles, red beetles, yellow beetles, okay? Now, one of the beetles, we probably need two, but one or two of the beetles flies away from this mainland and heads to an island. Now, none of the, there aren't any beetles on this island, okay? So these beetles decide to stay on the island and over time they reproduce and make a big population. Well, this influences the phenotype and allele frequencies. Why? Well, over here, if we get red ones leaving out of this population, we have less red genes in this population, less red alleles. So right there, it's changing. And then over here, we have more red alleles. So over here in this population, we have just red ones, whereas over here, we have red and yellow. So by these guys leaving, we get fewer red alleles over here, and then over here, we get a whole bunch of them. So the founder effect really changes allele frequencies as well. Because neither of these populations has the same allele frequency as this original one did initially. All right. Next up, we have population bottleneck. This is an event that reduces the size of a population. Okay? Typically, this is a natural disaster which is really hard to type on here. All right, you probably can't read my handwriting. That's okay, I could type, but I'm being lazy. So natural disaster. So this is when we have a big population. So in this example right here, we have a big jar and we are having it filled with marbles. These marbles represent the genes in a population or the organisms in a population. So we have some yellow, some blue, some white. Now we have some big event happen. Let's say a tornado, okay? The tornado happens and what happens is that population gets smaller. You guys know like a bottleneck, right? Like right here, it gets smaller. It's smaller than the regular bottle, right? So a population bottleneck is when the population gets smaller. So in the end, this is the population we end up with. And it's random. It's random which ones end up surviving. A tornado doesn't pick which ones are the fittest and which ones are going to survive. 
okay? So it's not like natural selection where the fittest ones end up surviving because the tornado is not going to be like, oh, you have brown hair. I'm going to come destroy you, all right? So the tornado doesn't pick who it's going to kill. It just kills them, whoever's in the way, right? So at the end here, though, look at, we only have blue and white. So this changed our population, right? Because we only have blue and white organisms or blue and white genes left over. So this is another example of a uh, something that changes the gene frequency. It's the population bottleneck. And just remember the bottleneck. Bottleneck gets smaller just like the population gets smaller. All right, lastly here, we have mutations, okay? So mutations are changes in DNA. You guys learned about this way back when. Mutations can cause allele and phenotype frequencies to change as well, okay? So I'll give you a second to write this down. So... We've gone through five different things that can cause these allele frequencies to change in a population. All of these are what cause microevolution, all right? We're gonna do a sixth one tomorrow, all right? So leave a line in your notebook for number six tomorrow um, or in two days, I'm not sure when we'll get to it. But just to recap, five ways that we can cause microevolution to happen. Mutations, okay? A natural disaster kills off the population in a bottleneck. Effect. So like a fire or a hurricane. Founder effect. Some individuals decide, hey, I'm angry with you guys. I'm going to go start my own population. Do they have to be angry? No. They're just going to start their own population. Heck, maybe they even just got lost. All right. Gene flow. All right. We get individuals moving to other individuals. You guys do this all the time with schools, right? People, you guys move and then you have to go to a different school. Or you're like, hey, I hate this school. I'm going to go to a different school. Do you guys do this too? And natural selection. So those organisms that are best adapted end up surviving. All right. So those, oh, sorry. Those are the five that you guys are going um, to need to know for the test eventually. The five things that end up causing microevolution.